Does the Glen Alki 8-year-old deserve a place on your shelf? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and today we're going to be reviewing the Glen Alki 8-year-old Speyside Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Now, we've talked a lot about Glen Alki in the past. We've talked about Billy Walker, the man myth, the legend behind Glen Alki, formerly behind Glendronic, Ben Riek, and others. I'm not going to dive into that information. We've talked about that before. Uh, what I do want to talk about is the fact that I was actually a bit surprised to see them bring this whiskey out and add it to their range in 2022. And that's because I didn't really know if there was a place for it um, in their range. They had the 10 cast strength, the 12 year old, 15 year old, 18 year old, and a whole bunch of specialty oak finishes, virgin oak finishes, wine cast finishes. Um, I wasn't certain that this was something that we needed from Glen Alki. Then I gave it some more thought, and I thought about what they didn't have in their range already, which was a non-age stated whiskey. And it would have been very easy for them to go ahead and make this a non-age stated whiskey, you know, um, put some garish name on it, some outlandish packaging, a really cool label, charge us an extra 20 or $30 and, and, and call it done. But they didn't do that. They told us how old this whiskey is even though it's a single digit. Something that you don't see very often from the, the Scotch whiskey uh, industry. They really shy away from those single digit age statements for the most part. They said, no, it seems that they had full confidence in this release. And they said, yeah, we'll put the eight year age statement on there. We're not ashamed of that. We're actually proud of that. So that's a really interesting thing. And that's a really good sign uh, of things to come. Now, so kudos to Glen Alki for that. Now the the cask makeup on this whiskey is actually identical to the 10 cask strength. Uh, it's using uh, Oloroso sherry, Pedro Menas sherry, Rioja red wine casks, as well as virgin oak casks. Now, they're not necessarily using them in the same proportions as the 10 cask strength releases, and obviously this has been uh, watered down, it's been diluted. Uh, it's not at cask strength, but there is that interesting um, parallel there between those two releases and that one's been very well received uh, so it'll be interesting to see with this one uh, what we think of it that said stats on this whiskey again eight years old it's 46 percent abv it's non-chill filter it's natural color as in regards to price uh, i've got the 12 uh, year old right here as a good uh, comparative to it because the eight year old comes in in alberta in canada here for 85 dollars canadian uh, the 12 year old is $95 four year age difference and only a $10 price difference. Very, very interesting there. That had me raising an eyebrow, uh, but I didn't want to judge it before I tried it. Um, the cast makeup on the 12 year old, if you're interested to see if there's a difference in there, the only difference I can find is that the 12 year old is just Oloroso, Pedro Jimenez and Virgin Oak. There's none of that uh, Rioja red wine, uh, Spanish red wine cask influence. Uh, with that, I think we should get to the review. Thank you guys for watching the channel. I really appreciate all the support. Uh, I love seeing and reading all your comments, which is why I wanted to ask you guys for your feedback. Uh, what's your favorite Glen Allakey release? And if you've had the eight year old, how do you think it actually stacks up against this 12 year old? Thank you for watching the channel. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. If you haven't already, please please go ahead and, and click those buttons. It really helps the channel. Uh, and if you have been doing it, keep on doing what you're doing. It's really helping uh, me push forward to make more content for you. Speaking of more content, uh, we recently launched a Patreon uh, membership page and I will be posting more and more Patreon exclusive reviews and videos there, as well as some other perks. We have a few members already, which I'm very thankful for. They've really stepped up to support the channel. And it's just another way you can go ahead and support what we're doing here on Whiskey on the West Coast. Glen Alkey, eight year old on the nose. Is like super concentrated, like mandarin orange, like orange oil. Definitely mandarin orange and raisins. Yeah, it's almost like the raisins. It's not like jammy or stewed raisins. It's more like the raisins in like my. <laughs> I used to eat raisin bran for breakfast. That's what it reminds me of. Is is that type of raisin? There's some candied spice and like raspberry notes. 
it's a lot brighter than I remember the 12 year old um, smelling. I think the 12 year old is a lot mustier, a lot darker, a lot, um, a lot more brooding sort of sherry bomb territory than this. This is brighter. It's like a crushed almond or like maybe almond slice, almond paste sort of note. Caramel, butterscotch. I oftentimes pick up like chocolate and, and coffee notes in Glen Alk. You, there's definitely something verging on those things here in the nose. Like it's not like black coffee, maybe like <laughs> sweet sugared up coffee that you get from Starbucks, like a toffee nut latte or something like that. Yeah, more along those lines. Definitely some red wine influence. And the chocolate is... It's more like a white chocolate sweetness, honestly. Like white chocolate pastels or something like that. Interesting. All right. To the palate. Just a surprising amount of grip on this palette, um, which is really interesting. Um, definitely a bit of bite. Uh, it really digs in there. Um, and I guess what I'm trying to say with that is like there, there's a good amount of spicing with the sweets that are going on. We've got orange pulls through from the nose. Raisins are in there for sure. Butterscotch, toffee. But it also has like cinnamon candy hearts, uh, like the you know, ones from Valentine's Day. That's in there. And it's producing a bit a bit of heat on the outside of my tongue. And I think that's what I mean by that grip. Um, taking another sip here. See, now there's chocolate most certainly on the palate here. Milk chocolate into the finish, it turns to dark chocolate with a bit of bitterness. And that may be the oak there. Uh, it might be just like, um, a lot of cask influence um, coming from that. Not as much cask influence as I'm used to on Glen Alki, to be perfectly honest. This is actually a lot lighter on the cask influence. I think that's pulling through with some other flavors too. I found a bit more minerality um, on this expression than I have found on like the 12, uh, for instance, which I just find is like a perfect like sherry bomb. It's the perfect replacement for Glendronic 12 if you used to drink that. I used to drink that. I used to always stock that on my shelves. That's the whiskey that really got me into scotch and I would drink the Glen Alki 12 over that any day now. Outside of older bottlings, of course, that were overaged, but there's some ginger on this palette too. Uh, another sip. This is this is good stuff, guys. Um, eight years old, single digit. It's still good whiskey. There's like a maraschino cherry thing going on there too. All those dessert tones, all those sweets, so like I said earlier, orange, raisin, butterscotch, toffee, it's all there. There is a bit of like a, a clove note too, um, which is really interesting. There, it feels like the palette is actually almost a little bit grounded in like a extra bit of earthiness. That, that might be the bitterness from that like dark chocolate moving towards the finish. And really, I feel like that's coming from the oak. It may, might even move a little bit into slightly astringent territory. Um, but I still I still really like the, the, the finish. The finish, I'm getting more of a darker coffee note. I get that dark chocolate, a bit of like a leather sort of thing, um, and some spice uh, and oak influence. I think that's a really well put together whiskey. I don't think this is merely eight years old. I would say that there's older whiskey in it. In fact, I've heard rumors to that effect that there is older whiskey in this Glen Alecky 8. So after nosing this and tasting it, if I do a quick comparison to keep this as brief as I can, I'm not often brief on these reviews. I'm sorry, guys. But the nose on the 12 is just bursting with jammy, oh my gosh, jammy dark fruits. That orange note is really, really vivid. And the chocolate coffee notes are all over this. It's darker, it's richer. It's almost like mustier too. 
Mm. On the palette, I don't get any of that astringency. I think where that might be coming from is perhaps that might be part of the influence of that uh, of those Ryoka casks. Um, I'm not sure if the Ryoka casks are, are helping as much as they may be taking away. But then again, those Ryoka casts are probably giving us that like that raspberry note um, and some of those more brighter fruit tones uh, as opposed to the darker tones that I find in this 12. But man, do I love this 12. Uh, you can see from the the actual mark on this bottle, it's getting towards the end. And that's because I just really love it. I just really love that whiskey. Um, now, with only the small difference in price, I had a big suspicion that this eight-year-old was going to be used as a leverage device, a, a way to kind of kick the price of the Glen Alky 12-year-old up a bit. And, and so kind of, again, a kind of a wedge whiskey to, you know, create a new floor for the Glen Alky uh, range in regards to age and price, and then bump the 12 up. I haven't seen that actually happen. That hasn't really been borne out on, on the shelves with, with sticker pricing. Um, they've remained relatively flat as flat as whiskey can be in this market where everything always seems to be going up anyways so i don't think there's been anything like that there i think they just had an idea for a whiskey they wanted to put together that had a little less cask influence than the 12 and uh, might appeal to a different bracket of whiskey lover uh, than the person who loves the glen Alky 12. i think um there's a place for the glen Alky 12 on people's shelves um, it ha again has less of that sherry influence, and I think it just brings a different dynamic to Glen Alky. I'm I'm really excited for when we finally do get an entirely ex bourbon Glen Alky release that's been distilled by Billy Walker and his team with the extra long fermentation um, uh, lengths they're going to be using and running the stills a lot slower. That's going to be an exciting moment when when we get that bottle to hand. Uh, but for right now, this is this is a nice interesting different take on Glen Alky. The big question for me uh, was, okay, will I be happy buying this bottle and having it in my collection? And who do I think this whiskey is for? Well, number one, I am happy to have this whiskey. I took it fishing with me on the river. I shared it with some people, salmon fishing on the river, and they all seem to love it. Um, I enjoyed it out there too, uh, which means it has a robust enough nose and palate to be a good whiskey to drink outdoors as well, which not every whiskey can do. I think it, it has a place on your shelf. Um, now, who is this whiskey for? Who is it best suited to? I don't want to suggest that this is the starting point for people with Glen Alky. I still think the best place to start with Glen Alky is the 12. Why? Because I think that is kind of the perfect embodiment of what Glen Alky does really, really well. Um, so I'm still going to suggest that someone's wanting to explore Glen Alky for the first time, you start with that 12-year-old before going to a 10 calf strength, before going to the 8-year-old, or before bumping way up to the 15. I think you got to start with the 12. I still think for someone who wants a little less cask influence, but still something recognizable as Billy Walker's Glen Alky, the 8-year-old, it has a place. I'm happy I bought it. This is not a regret for me. Uh, however, I don't love it as much as the 12, and so the score is going to reflect that. So the score, for me, uh, is going to be 84 out of 100, which is a great score. That's like a solid B if we're still in grade school, isn't it? Um, I'm happy to have this bottle. I'll be drinking through this. I'll consider replacing it, especially if I find it on sale. My bottle, I picked it up for $65 on sale, not the $85 regular price that I'm seeing in Alberta. A 65 Hell yeah, I'd pick up another bottle. Why not? Um, again, if I see the 12 on a similar price, yeah, no, I'll be I'll be picking up the 12. But those are my thoughts on the Glen Alky 8-year-old and how it stacks up against the Glen Alky 12. Thank you once again, guys, for joining me on Whiskey on the West Coast. Again, let me know what your favorite Glen Alky is. If you've had the 8, let me know what your thoughts are on it. Thank you so much once again to my awesome Patreon members. You guys absolutely rock. Uh, I want to bring you guys some more exclusive reviews. Uh, as the fishing season winds down, I'll have more time for that. So I'm looking forward to that. And thank you, all my subscribers, everyone watching this video, for joining me on the West Coast. And until next time, it's lunch. <laughs>